All right, it's good to see everyone. <clears throat> I uh, first want to start out by giving a shout out to our staff that helped set up training camp. Um, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into that, not only just to make everything functional for our, our team to practice, but also to set up a, a great experience for our fans who were excited um, to get on campus here and, and feel their energy um, and, and passion for this team. Uh, we're, we're pumped up about that. Um, we love the excitement that's coming from the fan base. Um, you can feel that in the city uh, this summer. Uh, I felt it all the way at Cooperstown this year. I took my son to a baseball tournament down there. There was about eight teams from this area. Um, and all the kids found me, and I answered probably more questions than I'll, add, I'll uh, answer today. Um, and, and I love it. Um, it brings energy to our organization as we continue our climb. Um, we understand that this is a year-to-year -year process. Uh, you can't bring uh, the things from last year uh, to this year in terms of production and numbers. Uh, you start fresh, and that's what is beautiful about this game. Um, I, I challenged my uh, front office staff uh, to read this book called Wisdom of a Bullfrog uh, by Admiral McRaven, and, and one of the chapters was talking about the only easy day was yesterday. And that's going to be our approach is a, a daily approach, a daily effort. The work ethic has to go in um, in training camp this year for us to reach our ceiling and really define who we're going to be in, in 2024. Um, the chapter also talks about like the character of the people that um, that are leaders in that space. And it talks about passion and, and stamina uh, to do it over and over and over again. The resilience, coachability, grit. And the beautiful thing is the way that we scout our players and the, the types of people we bring in this organization, they have to have that. And we constantly are, are very intense, intentional about developing those traits as well. Um, which makes me feel really confident that, again, we're going to be able to, to reach our, our ceiling and, and have success. Um, some of the topics I want to hit on, uh, rookies, excited to have all the rookies here um, for the first practice tomorrow. Um, it's really important that they get um, as much time as possible in practice, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, they also get a really cool opportunity to learn from the vets that we have on this team. Uh, that are going to help show those guys how to play at a high level um, in the NFL, but also through the ups and downs, how, how to overcome some adversity as well. Um, so, again, we're just really excited about the makeup of our football team. <clears throat> Two guys were added uh, since we broke from uh, off-season programming, Mercedes. Lewis comes back. I think you all know what he means to this football team, uh, to both of us. Uh, he's a special man, a special leader. Uh, and still has gas in the tank to help us on Sundays and, and still be effective. We also added DeAndre Carter, uh, a player that has a lot of speed that can add to the competition in the receiving room uh, and also on special teams as a returner. Uh, one topic, the defensive end uh, position has popped up multiple times. Um, listen, it's our, in the front office, our job to look at every option that's out there to improve our football team. We feel really comfortable with the guys that we have in our roster now, and I'm excited. We're both excited to see uh, Travis and Eric really put their hands on those guys and develop them as we go through the beginning of training camp. But we will always have our eyes you know, on, on the list of players that we could potentially bring in. In terms of designations to, to start here, uh, Karan is going to start on NFI. Um, he has done an outstanding job this offseason working and, and rehabbing. We love his work ethic. That's a reason, one of the reasons why he's here. Um, he's progressing. Everything is positive, uh, but I don't have a specific timetable right now. And then uh, Chroma, the defensive end, um, he's going to start on PUP. Uh, had an issue with his finger, a uh, small operation. Uh, don't have a timetable for his return uh, either. And then our guys are checking in right now. Um, and they're going to run their conditioning test this afternoon. So if there's any updates to that list, uh, we'll make sure that information gets to you. I'll pass it over to Coach. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 You guys have a good summer? Short. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was short. It was short. Uh, so we started off on uh, Monday. I brought the staff, uh, coaches, uh, and their families, executives, and, uh, and uh, 
the head staff members over the house. We have a welcome back party every single year. And uh, I think I counted 18 kids in the pool at one time. I mean, it was, it was a, and yes, I did have a lifeguard. There was a lifeguard on duty, so it was good. But uh, we had a good time, a lot of good food and a lot of good fun, a lot of good laughs. So that was, a, that was really cool. So we got 50 days, right? 50 days before the first game. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's time to go, right? It's, it's go time, and uh, we're excited about that. Great, great to have the players back in the building, uh, really building off of, uh, you know, the nine-week program that we had. You know, so it was the whole mind, body, spirit. We're, you know, trying to really do a great job of building those guys up. Um, and then we really challenged the guys in the summer to level up, you know, to really level up in their conditioning, level up in their uh, mental aspect of the game, knowing the scheme, studying, and being on it. So those all lead to execution. And uh, that's really what we were doing there. And the guys, uh, we'll see today. We'll put them in the bod pod. We'll put them in to see where their body counts are. Uh, a lot of good reports so far in terms of the weights. And then we'll do our conditioning test uh, today as well. We'll be, we'll be able to see where they are from there. Um, you know, and then I have my team meeting today at 2 o'clock. And really the message for those guys is going to be, you know, leading from the front. We want guys to lead from the front. It doesn't matter what the age is, what, what you are, in your position, your unit, the team. We're going to give you the keys to drive the car and lead from the front. That's going to be the main message today with those guys. And I'll get in more depth with those guys as we go. We have a, we have a really uh, good mix of youth, you know, and, and experience uh, throughout the whole football team. But what we do have throughout the entire team is high character. You know, we have a high character football team and we're excited about getting the continuity of the offense, defense, special teams together during this camp. And uh, that's a big piece of that. That's really, you know, investing, right? We're gonna invest, those guys have to invest a lot. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, we have to grow as a football team and then ultimately we're gonna improve. Um, you know, we have to be, uh, you know, it's gonna have some really good elite competition. You know, just talk about that in terms of the, in position, right, um, at the running back spot, at the offensive line spot, at the receiver spot. Every spot on the football team is going to have that, and it's really because we've acquired and drafted well over the last few years, and our roster is better now, so there's more competition, and we welcome that. And uh, we have to evaluate the number as coaches, right? Don't look at the person, the personality. Look at what he's doing on the grass. And that, that to me, is going to be so important, how we evaluate that and really get our depth set. Because we know uh, we're going to need everybody on the roster uh, during the course of the year. we got to develop those guys as we go. Um, so uh, that's really it um, in terms of in terms of that. Well, the questions from there. Brian, what is training camp like for you as far as part of your process? You've built the team. You know a lot of these guys. A lot of them, there's, there's plenty of film or NFL experience. Yep. Is this kind of testing your theory as far as what will fit together or how good the roster is? Yeah, we're just constantly evaluating. Um, you know, you really have that kind of 53-man roster in your mind. You're looking at certain competition um, to see where, you know, it's tight or not. The biggest thing during training camp is just the health, you know, managing healthy guys that are there if you need to, to bring anyone in. Um, and really just watching that competition. That's what it comes down to. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, I don't know if I answered your question. Right, expecting off that, what's your process of sort of, identifying the big picture goals for this team while also kind of being aware of where they're at right now. And say that one more time. Just, what, what's your process of identifying kind of the big picture team goals for this team in the season while, while also staying kind of conscious of where the team is at right now at the starting gate? Yeah, we're constantly kind of going back and forth, like short-term thinking and, and long-term. Um, but right now, I mean, this is kind of a different situation we've been in the first two years. Um, you know, a lot of these position battles are going to be tight, and it's, it gets harder and harder to kind of create that 53-man roster just because there's an influx of, of talent. So um, it's challenging, but it's a good problem to have. You brought up your defensive end uh, issue without us having to do it. Um, what, what do you need for a fit there? It, are you waiting for prices to come down? Are there people on the market that intrigue you, or, or do you want to see whether some, some of them shake free closer to cut? Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it as a defensive end problem. Um, it's our, our mindset is always how can we make a position group the best we can possibly make it and deep as we possibly can make it. So it, it's like I said, just really leaning on Travis and Eric to continue to uh, develop that, the players that we have in and, and see, especially when we get pads on, see how they do. We saw some really encouraging things during OTAs. Uh, but we all know this game is played in full pads, so we want to see that.
process through. The there's, there's, uh, there's real expectation for this this team this year and for for Caleb Williams. How fast do you think, from what you've seen so far, that he can pick up the offense and be the Caleb Williams that you guys scouted and saw play at USC? I'll, I'll take that one. So really, that the the, the uh, level up you know for him in the summer is really uh, he's done a really good job with that studying. Uh, you know, Shane and those guys put together a really good program for him to be able to study and level up that way. And, uh, you know, we're looking for improvement every single, you know, I just texted him, you know, just a couple minutes ago about, you know, looking for improvement from the first practice to the fourth practice. We'll take a day off and then we'll assess where he is. And then we're going to do it the same thing again for the next stack of practices. And if we look back and then when we get to the 50 days and we're at the opener, he's going to be from here. He's going to be all, all the way here. So the concepts were there in the summer. We did a nice job of learning those. Uh, formations, motions, everything that we, we ask him to do. And uh, he's going to level up from there and keep doing that during camp. Matt, right. in the spring, you talked about well, learning style and just how much that impressed you. Yeah. For a rookie receiver coming into such a crowded position room, what does he need to do to carve out a role for himself? Yeah, just keep learning and getting the exposure and the experience. You know, that's like the guys go through one on ones, seven on seven, our team drills when we do our, you know, Cincinnati practice. That's going to be really good to see him go against different skill sets there. And he's just got to compete, you know, and, and do exactly what he did in college. He's got to understand it's a little bit different up here because the guys are a little bit tighter on you. They're a little bit better, and it's going to be more elite in terms of the competition. He's just got to get used to that. Once he gets used to that, uh, he's going to be fine. Right. right. So follow up on the pass rush. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your evaluation of Yannick and Gakwe last season for you guys? Yep. And how in the loop or involved have you guys been in his recovery from the injury? Yeah, so um, I'll work backwards. So with the physical therapy, you know, our athletic training group has, has been a part of that all the way through. Um, Evaluation-wise, you know, I think once we got Montez, you saw the sack rate go up for really everybody. Um, so I think it enhanced everyone, um, but really enjoyed our, our time with him. Uh, thought he did a nice job, brought some leadership, so it was positive. Is he healthy now? Uh, I can't. Our guys haven't, like, Put their hands on him. He's been doing physical therapy in a different place. So right. I can't really answer that. Well, it's the consideration in having Caleb Williams come in as the number one quarterback on day one, as opposed to having a rookie veteran apprenticeship or a competition. And what do you see as the benefits of having him number one right from the top of bat? And what are the pitfalls that you want to avoid? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for me, it's just uh, believing in Caleb. You know, putting him in there and let's go. You know, I think that uh, the expectation is him to be the starter. He is the starter uh, when we drafted him, and that's where we put him in. We put him in the position uh, to be that. Uh, and we're going to do a great job of supporting him to get him ready for the first game. Do you anticipate, Matt, do you anticipate playing him more than you would with a normal quarterback in the preseason to try to get him ready for the start? Yeah, we talked about that in the spring a little bit, you know, looking back at what some other guys have done in the past. And, yeah, we, we certainly want to do that, and uh, we'll take that week to week. Uh, but there's value in, in really all the reps when you think about it because he's going to be going against the one defense. Um, you know, in preseason games, you don't get all the looks sometimes that you would get during practice. So I think there's equal value to going against the ones, you know, every single day and also getting some of those preseason reps as well. Have you mapped out how, much, how many snaps they'll get in preseason? Like, have you guys talked about that? Yeah, we've looked at it. We're discussing it. We haven't made any decisions, but certainly want to get them some reps. You know, I know the guys last year got 45 to 55 reps, you know, in terms of those guys. And uh, we're looking at that, you know, right in that range. We'll see. Uh, but, again, you, it's always week to week because you got to see what the health of your line is and where everybody is. But certainly all those exposures are equally as valuable. Right. You said in the offseason it was going to be really hard to make this team. Do you feel like this camp – Going into this camp is going to be one of the most competitive you've seen in your time here. I do, I, I really do, and uh, we've talked a, about that a lot the last few days. Uh, we're excited to to have that, and I think the beautiful thing about that competition is it brings the best out of everybody. Uh, you got to be on top of your game. I talked about it before. You, you got to have like competitive stamina to be able to do that over a long period of time, um, and that really should develop. You know, our, our depth level players are guys that are trying to be starters versus rotational guys. So we're excited about it. Right. You, you told us you've gone through contract negotiations with an older player before who didn't have an agent. Yeah. What was it like having a rookie who was self representing but told us multiple times that he would not be the one handling the process yeah. of his contract getting done? Yeah, it, it was positive. Um, I think the takeaway that I learned when I first got here um, uh, with the first situation. 
was it just takes a little bit of time and, and patience. Um, but for for the situation, it was positive, and it just was, um, you know, continue to educate, continue to communicate at a high level. Um, so I'm, I'm glad it all worked out. Can you you talked about some of the things that Brad, Brad, Brad and Taylor. You talked about needing to have the pads on for the defensive ends. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that extends to offensive line members sure. as well. What what's your comfort level with that group as a whole? Um, you've been able to make a few moves. Yep. Most guys O-line or D-line? O-line. Yeah. Um, I feel really good about the offensive line. Um, obviously, we're, we're excited to see Darnell take the next step. Now, I know he has the opportunity to be pretty special. Um, Braxton's coming along and continuing to get better. Um, and then we have, you know, with Bates and Coleman, you know, competing inside. I, I think there's opportunity that we can be really talented and, and deep. Um, and one of the kind of the tough things we've had to deal with the first two years is just a lack of depth and uh, not enough versatility to really create the best five from week one all the way to the very end of the season. So um, we're, we're happy with that group, but obviously they got to continue to work, get better, and again, build that chemistry together. Um, can, you confirm, can you confirm some of the things that Phil Paul talked about and what about the negotiations with Caleb, meaning he asked the Bears um, not to use the franchise pay against Ford creative um, tax strategies like getting paid as an LLC and getting forgivable loans. Was that correct? And what were the conversations like specifically with the franchise tag asked? Yeah, so I'm not going to get into the negotiation and what's asked, what's not asked. Um, just for general knowledge, it's very common for different things to be asked for in the very beginnings of negotiations. So um, it, it wasn't anything shocking in terms of what was being asked for or, or anything like that. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm glad it worked out and pretty kind of standard. Brian, what the case? Case? You, you had all the football information yeah. last year, I mean, before you ever even really <clears throat> got into the draft, the offseason of the draft process. But what have you learned about the uniqueness of his personality over the last few months and how outside the box of a thinker he is, maybe even in the, the contract negotiations? Yeah, I just, I think he's a, first of all, he's a really bright kid. Um, I think he has the ability, um, when you see him interact with his teammates, to interact and have relationships with everybody. Um, very mature in the way he approaches things. Uh, I would say the thing that stands out the most that gets everyone excited is, uh, well, actually two things, his, his passion for the game and his work ethic is, is outstanding. The kid's a grinder um, and wants to be great, but it's always nice to see the work ethic match the desire to be great. Two more. Two more. Two more. Pat and Chris. What would you consider a successful season? It's hard to define. Um, I, I like that we start training camp and have the ability to define that in terms of what our ceiling is. Um, like I said in the opener, you know, we're going to just take a daily approach and get better and better. Um, I just want to continue to improve our goal. Uh, never backed away from it. Our goal is always to win a Super Bowl and to take the division. And I feel like we're continuing to get closer and closer to that. So I'm excited to, to find out what that ceiling is. Right. For a lot of teams with these rookie quarterbacks, you hear about the process of preaching patience and understanding kind of the, this development part. With Caleb obviously stepping in as a number one right away, how would you kind of define your expectations and hopes for him as a rookie this year? Yeah, it's, it's really just to maximize his ability. I think I want to see, I and mean, we've talked about this, just leaning on the talent around him as well. I think it's it's got to be comfort, comforting to know like you don't have to do everything on your own, um, which makes it a, a pretty good situation for a young quarterback. Um, and really just there's going to be uh, adversity. Um, and I just want to see him lean on all of us to get through those moments. And then when it's, you know, you're, you're clicking and in the zone that those high moments are, are high and we just continue to learn and continue to get better uh, every single week and every day. Thank <laughs> you.